Uh, good morning, everyone. I, I decided to make a short video about uh, making the new main shaft for my spindle assembly. Um, so I'm trying out some things. I'm uh, not particularly good at production value, but you know that already. Um, anyway, I, I hope it's interesting and useful. And as always, drop me a comment. Um, if you have a question or a suggestion, thanks. I wanted to show the production of a new main shaft. This may be kind of machining 101 to a lot of you guys, but uh, to me it's always one of those uh, uh, nail-biting things because you're trying to get that uh, the bearing diameter. This is just basically a spacer, and the, uh, the worm gear will mount here with a threaded nut and a pin that also drives the back half of the main shaft. So um, this all came out pretty good. Um, I did just a little bit of uh, polishing to get the bearing from here down to there, but it, uh, it fits exceptionally well. Um, I'm gonna knock it off for the night and we'll, tomorrow we'll put the L00 taper on the, on the front of this thing. Good morning. I'm back in the shop to, uh, I'm going to finish up some of the attachment details on this end of the main shaft. Um, I mentioned that this is the diameter that's going to mount the, the worm gear. There'll be a nut that threads on there. And then there'll be a counter bore that accepts a, uh, a stub on the end of the rear shaft, the, uh, the feed train shaft uh, that will mate with a pin that I'm gonna put through right about here. Um, so that'll be kind of a, hopefully a, a pretty decent uh, coupling, uh, but that, that will drive the feed train, but it doesn't need to be as uh, kind of zero lash as the rest of this. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do today is put the uh, L double knot uh, long taper nose on this shaft. Uh, to accept the chuck. All the rest of this is done. Um, the only other change is I'm going to make a, a new nut for this end. I extended the shaft here about a half an inch to make room for a nut with an oil seal. Um, in this case it's going to be mostly uh, to keep chips out, chips and coolant out of the inside of the spindle box. Anyway, with that, I'm going to switch back over to, uh, to time-lapse mode.
Well, that came out pretty good. Now we're ready to unchuck this thing and put the taper uh, details on the other end. Okay, I wanted to stop at this point. I know there's some background noise here. I got my heat going um, and the phase converter for the lathe. Um, but I wanted to stop at this point just so I could talk a little bit about how to set up and make the paper. But again, I'm not professing to be an expert on any of this. And uh, if anyone actually is, I'd. I would appreciate uh, I would appreciate uh, some suggestions, but I'm going to show you how I set up to cut the taper uh, on the nose of the spindle. It is really not a not a huge big deal, uh, or at least I shouldn't say that. The last time I did this, it came out pretty well. Um, so what I want to start by doing is uh, I'm going to unlock the tool post and I'm going to use a square to, to square it with the cross line or the compound. Well, this little bit here, these next few pictures, just give you an idea how I produce the angle plate. This is pretty standard stuff. Just put two holes at an angle using the functions of the DRO and then use those as reference. So this is an L00 taper. It's eight degrees, 17 minutes and 50 seconds. And if you decimalize that number, uh, you can make that angle pretty doggone close on the on the mill. So what I want to do is put this tool holder on the tool post and put this in like that. Now that I've squared the I've squared the tool post with the compound. 
I've turned this diameter um, presumably parallel to the axis of the lathe. And now what I can do is lay this up against that angle block. you can see that but that looks pretty good to me just bang on be any closer. Now the last time I did this, I didn't have to make any adjustments at all. It fit, uh, it fit really good. We'll try it this time and see how it goes. If, and if I have to tweak the angle, I'll just uh, bump this compound slide a little bit one way or the other. like a reasonable fit I got a somehow unaccountably I got a steel chip embedded in this cast iron adapter plate but it looks like it's making decent contact along both lands not perfect but you know I think uh, when I get the nut on there to kind of draw it up a little bit it'll be just fine See, it's making contact there and there, and this adapter's got two lands inside it. So it looks like it's making decent contact on the first pass. So I'm gonna call that good enough. And all we have left to do is put the uh, keyway in it. And I'm, I won't bore you with those details, but uh, I'll just do that on the mill here. That'll only take a couple minutes. So um, anyway, Let's, uh, let's unchuck this and see what we got. Not too bad, a little blue, but not too bad. A 
number of folks have indicated in the comments that they'd like to see more chips flying. So I hope, uh, I hope this has helped to some degree. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I appreciate your likes and your uh, subscription and uh, any comments or questions that you might have. Thanks for watching.